So guys, I'm going to do that review here on this vehicle long term over 153,000 miles. Here we go. Guys, just a couple uh, important things. This is the air filter box, really easy to change out, okay? Um, ow, I just hit my head. Um, just these two clips here, and pops out, and then this one here is the dipstick, that's for the engine oil. This one here is the oil filter, awesome location for it, makes it super easy. Make sure you write the mileage on it, and um, this one here is obviously to add the engine oil. The, this is for wiper fluid, okay? That is the brakes over there and obviously the batteries batteries are nice and visible so there you go welcome back guys i am in my 2015 subaru forester original owner and i'm gonna show you how many miles i've got on this vehicle now so um it's been a while since i've done a long-term review and update on this vehicle 153,000. 307,000 miles okay that's that's quite a bit of miles i'd say that's a decent amount um a lot a lot has changed okay uh between now and the last time i gave um a long-term review like around 120,000 miles um the engine's sounding pretty good right now everything's working okay so right now everything's working great um air conditioning all my buttons uh you name it um no issues and i'm just i hope it stays that way you know i really do um again uh, original owner um i've been doing all the maintenance on this vehicle by myself a uh, couple couple things i did have to take to the dealership one of them was and it's a common problem and there was some kind of recall or tsb or something on it uh, but the key would not come out of the ignition okay so the keys just you try to take it out and it, it would stay here and you couldn't take it out, you know. Um, I had to go to the dealership to get that fixed and it was past the um, expiration date of them fixing it. And so I had to pay out of pocket. I did call Subaru of North America. I think they gave me some kind of coupon or something for a little bit off. Honestly, I don't know if it was a discount, but I ended up paying about 400 bucks, okay, out of pocket to the dealership to fix the ignition um, because the key just wouldn't come out of the ignition. Um, there is a fix to do that, but it's a temporary fix. It wasn't a permanent fix, okay? Um, you would actually essentially just pop this off, which honestly, I don't think it was very easy to pop off, uh, at least this one. So I just took it to the dealership and said, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and... And there, it's a safety mechanism thing for the Subaru uh, ignition lock. Um, what else? uh sunroof's working good drives fine the axles are good wheel bearings are good um those have all gone out but they have been replaced the um cvt valve body solenoid uh that's a common problem over a hundred thousand miles generally um mine failed around 120,000 miles subaru of north america paid for 50 percent of it so thank goodness for that um what else uh ah, gosh is that it um i do the one thing i do love about about this vehicle is the oil changes um i just replaced the spark plugs not too long ago let's take a look at that as well so there's the car now if i drove this thing i'd probably tint the windows um make it look a little bit more pimped out because that's my style. So uh, the battery, man, it's gonna need a new one soon. I've got, I actually have another battery. Um, okay, things I like about this engine, okay? Number one, this serpentine belt is super easy to replace, okay? So all you need to do is get something to turn this down there. Um, next time I do the belt, I'll show you how, but literally, honestly, you can do it like in five minutes. It's super easy. Um, I did have a problem with the air conditioning, uh, but the AC clutch was the problem. Um, I've, I've had to make adjustments to the AC clutch about two to, two to three times because uh, the clutch would just burn out. So you had to take out some of the shims, um, which look like washers. So that was an issue. Um, again, 150K. I'm using Fram right now. Um, I think I'm just, you know, it's been working okay. Um, I might just go back to regular Subaru oil filters. Um, 
I use thicker oil, guys, so my engine does not burn any oil at all. Um, let's see here. Where are we at? Well, I just started the vehicle, so it's going to have to sit for a while. I have a Fomoto valve on this vehicle, so it makes it super easy to change the oil cha Oil changes are super easy. Um, spark plugs. Okay, there's four on each side. I should have done a video on it. So, um, actually, there's two on each side. Uh, it's a four-cylinder engine, so there's one, there's two. So both of them are accessible. I mean, helps if you have smaller hands, but they are accessible. You do need a couple wobblies and uh, variation, different types of uh, uh, extension sizes as well to do that. It's not the easiest, but it was doable. Um, Kane in air filter, okay? That's what I'm using in this vehicle. Seems to be working good, okay? So uh, I've got a Kane in air filter in my Prius as well. I tried putting a Kane in air filter in my my honda but it actually ran worse so i took that back out um i'm on my third battery and honestly this battery's lasted longer than i thought it would but it does have some issues so i'm gonna have to take care of that um what else uh the other two um the other two spark plugs one two okay so it's kind of that black square cap you can kind of sort of see it um, those are the accessible areas and you want to do that about every 60,000 miles. Okay. 60 to 70,000 miles, uh, for spark plugs. Um, I installed new brakes. I left the same rotors. Um, the rotors were fine. There was no warping, no shaking, put the new, uh, brakes on and it still runs great. Um, the brakes lasted for me, honestly, over a hundred thousand miles. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, the front brakes should last quite a while longer i've got at least fifty thousand miles i can't see it in there um these tires these are the falcon wild peaks very um popular tire falcon wild peaks at trail the they're good honestly they're awesome they're, they're good they're awesome you know um last year i did not put snow tires on this i probably should have um and i would if you drive in compacted snow so um that's a recommendation has it been holding up? Yes. Uh, it drives really sporty. Suspension's good. Um, seats are comfortable. And honestly, probably the best thing I like about this car is the visibility. Okay. When you're inside this vehicle, the visibility is awesome. Okay. You're looking left, right, rear view mirrors and everything. It's great. Okay. Um, so that's a bonus. Uh, I'm hoping that I can keep this thing running without any significant mechanical breakdowns um you do have to be handy honestly it helps to be handy because the parts and the labor for any vehicle to get fixed is ridiculously expensive so watch my youtube videos on how to fix things um i didn't i haven't had a chance to do too many repairs on youtube um with this vehicle and i and i should have i like regret not not making enough videos um to do the wheel bearings and axle changes and things like that but the left and right axle both have been done in the front the lower control arms i also did myself um those weren't as bad as i thought they would be it was i mean i kind of have a video on that one um on the lower control arms you can take a look at that um i might even have something on the wheel bearing uh in my channel as well but honestly overall long-term review it's holding up it's still a solid car it runs smooth. The engine's good. I do use thicker oil, and I would recommend you guys using thicker oil. It's your call, man. Your car. Um, I don't burn any oil, and I also use the Lucas uh, Lucas oil treatment, and that's been working just fine. You know, it's thick um, like honey, but the engine runs smooth. There's no ticks or weird startups or dry startups or anything like that. Um, like I said, I'm going to keep maintaining this vehicle. If I can get over 200,000 miles without any more serious mechanical issues, I'm going to consider that a win. Okay. Now this vehicle has, um, even though I, I love it, it's, it has had more, uh, more things break down than what I've cared for. Okay. Um, I hear that the 2018s are probably a little bit better. So, uh, Hey, you know, go for it, you know? Um, but 
again, uh, my wife drives this car. She babies it. It's never off-road. Um, wintertime, if you put studded tires on this car, it's unstoppable. Okay, so I do have a pair of studded tires for times when winter is really bad. Um, it's all-wheel drive. Drives great in the snow. I've, I've div driven this in at least 6 to 10 inches of snow um, with studded tires. It's awesome. Okay, it, it runs just fine. Um, for long road trips, it's a little bit sporty. I mean, it's more bumpier than what you probably think, uh, but it does drive well in terms of its responsiveness. Um, the throttle is very responsive. Some people like it. Some people do and don't, you know. My wife likes it because, you know, she doesn't need to put much effort into getting this car going. Uh, some vehicles, you got to push on the pedal harder, you know. So, um it just depends. It's it's kind of a preference, but definitely test drive it. See if you like them. You know, the RAV4 is probably one of the biggest competitors against the Subaru Forester, and both are great vehicles. Um, both have advantages and disadvantages over each other. But uh, there's a popularity with these cars, you know. I, I just think that, um, um, you know, I, I, personally, if I was to get a Subaru, I like the Outback. It's a little bit bigger as well it's very roomy definitely not as good looking as the forester but i'll tell you what the outback looks looks like it might be more reliable um and the capacity size i, I like that um i think the forester might be a little a little taller sitting which is nice too but in terms of its uh its view out here side views everything out else it's awesome you know great vehicle to drive what else um what do you guys like about your Subaru? You know, let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've had any problems with your Subarus or if they've been trouble free. Some people don't have any issues, you know, that's awesome. So, uh, but you definitely want to maintain it. Like I said, the oil changes on this vehicle, super easy. And that if you're doing the oil changes, reg I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing the oil changes regularly, especially with a filter right there on top, you know, um, that's one thing I like about BMW as well as the Subaru. I had a BMW with the oil canisters on the inside, and I liked that. That just made life so much more convenient. I hate changing my oil on the Honda Ridgeline. Um, it's an annoyingly horrible location for that oil uh, cartridge filter. But, hey, you know, it is what it is. Uh, all right, guys, give it a thumbs up. I hope you appreciate the videos. And this is just kind of a long term um, review uh, on on what's going on with it. It's running great right now. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it, it keeps doing the same thing like that. Take the care. Nice thing I like about the Subaru Forester, plenty of room in the back. OK, so pretty spacious, pretty spacious cargo, even in the uh, even for kids front. It's running good. No problems there.